your paintings are very different. We're not normally, when you go to an art gallery, allowed to touch things. No, you're not. What's very different about these is that these are sculpted paintings. Now, the sculpted paintings, what this does is invite into the art arena what was really the previously excluded audience of the blind and visually impaired. As well as that, children are excluded for simple reasons, stand away, don't touch. And adults and children with learning difficulties have been excluded. So this whole exhibition is about including that excluded audience. This one picture here is an example, it's called Share My Dream. And it's images here of, as if you were to walk through a forest, you know, if you walk through a forest and you look and you see one image, and you think, oh, I can see the sea over there. And then you walk around a corner, you see an old tree trunk, you walk around another corner, there are leaves on the ground, then there's a stream and there's little fishes going through. So this Share My Dream is sort of one of those moments when you wake up in the morning having dreamt, you think, why did I dream that? But this encompasses all these things you might have in a dream. And what this does is enable... If you imagine that you're not able to see, you can feel the fish, the bubbles in the water, the tree trunks, the leaves, the um, twigs. You can feel the sun and the moon just simply because they're made up of sand. And that's in essence what these paintings are about. And they're narrative paintings. They're paintings that have a story. So can I just touch some of this Please painting do. now? Yes. Yeah. So if I touch the, the moon this is yes it's got a very sort of rough surface and that's to it. made up of sand that's made out of sand and yes this too is made out yeah. of sand then mm. if I just move mm. my hand down a little bit yes we've that's got made of plaster and this creates water yes and it's almost as though it's flowing down you it can is. kind that's of feel that and then we've got the river with fish in yes and if you press onto the fish you can just feel how flat they are yeah and they feel very feel smooth as they well. do they do and the little dots there as, as if they're little bubbles it's, it's to show a tiny stream little bubbles of water going through whereas the water underneath in this little river there are waves on there so that's a slightly different feel and you've also got here tree trunks so you have dead tree trunks so there's not a huge texture to it but you have a big tree trunk so it feels like the bark of a tree and then if we move further along across the painting it's, it's absolutely crammed full of lots of different textures and lots of feeling um, we've got a rainbow here, yeah, isn't it? very smooth. Um, it, there's no texture and just colours coming through. Some birds up in the sky that you can feel there. Um, there's sort of like bushes on a landscape. You're looking down. There's a little yacht. Can you feel the figure on the back? Oh yeah. If you imagine, you if your yeah. fingers are much more sensitive, there's a figure. There's a head. There's the shoulders, and one small blind child could actually pick out. I said that's a boy, and I said, why is it boy? Because it's, it's got no hair. Wow. Well, that was amazing. So his fingers were very sensitive, obviously. If you've lost the sense of sight, are your other senses heightened too? I mean, I probably wouldn't be able to feel that or even notice that that was a, a boy. But I don't think you'd bother to look. You yes. see, I think that's the difference. We have no idea what that crossover is. But I think with all of us, with sight, we scan. We look very quickly at something. If we like it, we stop and look again. And, you know, this is... The reason why this actual work started is that I had met a woman who was blind and visually impaired and nearly blind and she had painted and she had and enjoyed exhibitions and it's one of those simple questions that changes her life, my life. I said, well where do you go now then to see and feel art? And she said, oh my dear, I don't go anywhere. You're not allowed to touch. And it didn't leave me. I thought, of course you're not allowed to touch, that's why she can't go. And within about a week I thought, I'm going to make something. But it had to be fairly flat. It's on a hardboard, so they didn't stick out too much. So to you, it looks like a painting. And a lot of people in this corridor haven't realised you can touch. That's why I signed everywhere, please touch the paintings. And what's it, what this has done is develop a whole new art form. And to my knowledge, there isn't anyone else doing it. So it's very, very new, this kind of work. And if we move along down the corridor... Let me tell you about this one. This is a very interesting one because this is, if you look at it, it's the shape of a woman. You're looking straight at the woman, you see the breast, the waist and that. But the, what this is influenced by is the African landscape. When I was flying over down to South Africa, I looked down and I said, oh, it looks like the shape of a woman if you look at all the hills. And all the images you would see on that landscape, what I've done is dress the shape of that woman now, you probably don't realise how much you can touch, but every dot is built up. And so you've got very, very tiny dots here, and, and that would be ten coats of a very fine plaster on that. 
and maybe 15 coats of a very fine plaster on that. And this is made up of very fine plaster, just that, simply plaster. But she's dressed in it. So it's called Mother Earth. So you've got that sort of shape. And how long does it take you to do a painting like this? Sometimes I think forever. The difficulty is to know how long, maybe a week or so, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. For the simple reason, if you were to, say, put this section here, which has got very large dots on it with little dashes in between, once you've actually painted that with this fine plaster, this gesso, it has to dry. So I can turn it around and maybe work down the bottom, or I leave it and I'll go and work on the next one. It has to be bone dry. And then I have to do the same process all over again. And when somebody comes to a painting like this and they touch it, what sort of reaction do they have to the painting? There was a young boy, 16-year-old, um, who came in who lost his sight two years ago and he is actually doing some sculpture work. So his school brought him in for him to feel it and he was able to pick out some things. Mm -hmm. Once he'd gone through three or four paintings, he could then understand how I worked. So as we were working our way down, by the time we got to sort of the fifth or sixth, he said, I know what this is. Oh, I know what you mean by this. And there was on one of the landscape one, there was a gap at the top. That's the sky, isn't it? Because it's empty, there's no texture in that. And his feedback was wonderful. And what he said to us, he said, now you've influenced how I can do some work of my own which was wonderful, wonderful for me. And I, I gather he's going to be coming back and we're going to keep in touch. So as he goes from um, on to college now to study art and sculpture, that hopefully we'll keep in touch now. And I can see how he's progressing. Okay, and if we move a little bit further down along, um, let's have a look at this one. The, has, this is a, a painting called Happy Rain. Happy Rain is m painted in three colours, red, yellow and blue. And if you imagine raindrops, heavy raindrops falling down onto three umbrellas, a red umbrella which is painted in enamel, a blue one which is actually a fabric stuck down, and a yellow umbrella. And all the dots come down, each one is very raised, made up of this fine gesso, and painted with an enamel paint. Now this young man I was telling you about felt it and he said, I know this is rain because I can feel it. Now I hadn't told him anything, so he was able to pick up on that. And this is probably the one the children enjoy the most, is the happy rain. And so this, the, using the enamel paints has enabled me then to sort of make it slippery, make it wetter feeling. Yeah, there's definitely, as you run your hands down, there's almost sort of running your hand down wet glass. Yes, or wet, yeah. yeah. And then with the three different umbrellas, yes. you've definitely got a feeling of, I mean, this is, this is material, did you say? That's it's material, material. Yeah. just to break the textures up a little bit. And can we, perhaps if we go to one that I haven't really seen, and I'll just feel it and see what, what I can get from a painting without, without particularly looking at it, but just feeling it. Okay, so we've got, it seems quite smooth at the top, and you told me before that that boy managed to pick out that it was sky because exactly. it was smooth at the top. And then as I move my hand down, there's, there's a, ripples, there's like um, ridges, yes. but space in between each of the ripples. Right. It's so strange because you don't... My sense of touch is just so... I can even feel myself sort of just scanning over it very briefly. Yes. But I can imagine that when somebody scans over it and they can't see, they're just, they really take in every detail. How long does somebody take to feel a painting? Very, initially, very quickly. Um, this actually, the one that you're touching, can you feel down oh, there? Oh, yes. I just, just now come across almost like sandpaper feeling. Right, it's, it's like sand. A, it's okay, called yeah. the well, in, incoming tide. And all those ridges you felt, uh, you know when the, the tide comes in very, very slowly, no waves, just drifting in, but there's an edge to each little wave as it's yes, coming in, yeah. and it's coming into a shore. What's really interesting about this painting is that I, this was shown in Belgium um, just before Christmas, and a 10-year-old who had never been able to see came and felt it. So he's not read the title, he speaks very good English, and he felt it very, very quickly. He said, oh, I remember this day. I said, do you? And he said, yes, I remember it because I was happy. I was on my holiday. So I said, where did you go to on your holiday? He said, I went to the sea. So he didn't know the title. He picked it up extremely quickly. We're, we're sort of thinking ridges, ridges, ridges. But they're all registered. You think of your own memory box. Their memory box will be other senses coming in. Our memory box is usually sight and smell. But they have a different memory box than what we have. 
So this 11-year-old picked that up within minutes. That's amazing, yes. isn't it? Just to kind of relate that to an experience, yes. relate that sense of touch yeah. to and an And a experience. child doing that as well. 